And I, I once, uh, you know I'm a, a magician, and uh, uh, I got interested in mind reading and, and fortune telling, fake fortune yeah. telling, you know? And I got to know a lot of old fakes who had retired as millionaires, you know? <laughs> and they told me their secrets, how you do it. They have things that are called cold readings. Oh, what's that? A cold reading is you warm up the sucker by telling him things that he says, how could he ever know that, you see? You say, you know, between the ages of uh, 13 and 15, you had a, a great change came in your life. But that happens in everybody's life. Yeah. <laughs> but, but he says, he came in and told me things I already said. You've got a scar on your knee. Everybody fell down and has a scar on their knee. Those are cold have, readings, you see? I have a, now, I have a scar on my knee. How you did do. you know that? Yeah, you <laughs> see? Just something bigger than myself. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now, <laughs> the point about this is that you, after they're warmed up, they're amazed by this knee bit and the rest of it. They start telling you. Because you just say, is it sin? You see from their face it is or it isn't. And then you tell it back and they say, how did he do it, you see? So I was bored. I was playing in Kansas City with Catherine Cornell one time. And uh, we didn't have any matinee on Wednesday. So I hired a, a room and put Dr. Swami fortune teller, you know? Two, do two dollar readings. And for uh, the whole day, uh, they came in and I, each one, because I felt guilty about it at the end, I always said, I'm not going to take your money, you know, because I but couldn't it, have really taken it. For a whole day, I was a fortune teller, faking. But then there began to happen to me the thing that does happen to fortune tellers, and which is the occupational disease of fraudulence, fortune tellers. Uh -huh. And they have a name for it. It's called becoming a shut eye. And a shut eye in the argo of these crooks is the fellow who believe, begins to believe himself. Ah. You see, and you make these wild guesses. One of them explained to me, he says, supposing you're a night clerk in a hotel, and when you get the job, first of all, a fellow comes in, wants a single room. You look at how good his luggage is, how good are his shoes, and you tell him there's a room in the court, there's no room, or yes, sir, depending on various <laughs> pieces of evidence. He says, you've been a night clerk long enough, you glance and you tell it. You've been a night clerk a little longer and you don't have to look. You've seen it, but you have, the computer in here has made all of those deductions without your being conscious of it. So the mind reader gets so that he, without thinking, does that and then they say it's true. And a woman came in to me at the end of my, my career as a, as a fraudulent <laughs> fortune teller in a bright print dress and sat down looking perfectly all right, and I said, you've lost your husband last week. And she burst into tears, she had. And then I quit. <laughs> that was terrible. Yes, it's one of those things, undoubtedly, it's not psychic, undoubtedly there was evidence of a tragedy. There was all kinds of things that went into the computer and got processed without me crookedly thinking what I'm going to say to her. And that's how it works, I think. That's fascinating. That and, you, and you get f sort of f five spooky premonitions a like year. Like that, and then, you know, yes, I do. And I'm sure they're all spooky like that in some kind of funny way. I suppose I looked at Una and said, you know, she's just, Una is the, exactly the, the girl that would be happy with, with Charlie, I suppose. And instead of thinking, maybe you'll meet him, I just, what did I lose? I said, you're going to marry him. And she did. <laughs>